Hey, what's up everyone? It's your girl Brain Shanae and today I'll be sharing with you my January TBR. So if you want to know the books that I'll be reading in January, please stay tuned. I am back and if you're new to my channel welcome so like I said before today I'll be sharing with you my January TBR and of course January is my birthday month so I'm super excited about this month um, and if you do not know my actual birth date is January the 15th I actually share the birthday of Martin Luther King Jr. and I think Aaliyah's birthday is the day after the 15th but anyway before I get carried away with my birthday and everything what have you I want to go ahead and share with you my January TBR so the first book that I'll be reading is this book Bridgerton the Duke and I by Julia Quinn as you can see I'm already reading it what I plan on doing with this book is I'm be doing a vlog as I'm reading this book more of like a, a compare and contrast between the book and the TV series that is now on Netflix but I have seen Bridgerton on, on Netflix a few times now um, but I want to each episode I want to answer analyze it and uh, you know as well as read this book probably get a better understanding of everything um, and analyze certain things that are in the book that are, are not in the movie and what have you. So I definitely am going to be doing a vlog about this book. Um, let me know about what you think and what your thoughts about this book. I know there has been some controversy with the TV series versus the book itself um, due to certain um, instances that I don't want to get into just yet I probably will you probably will see that more in my vlog when I post it um but anyway let me go ahead and read the synopsis if you haven't read this book yet so it says um in the ballrooms and drawing rooms of Regency London rules abound from their earliest days children of aristocrats learn how to address an earl and curtsy before a prince while other dictates of the ton are unspoken yet universally understood a proper duke should be imperious, uh, imperious and aloof. A young, marriageable lady should be amiable, but not too amiable. Daphne Bridgerton has always failed at the latter. The fourth of eight siblings in her close-knit family, she has formed friendships with the most eligible, eligible young men in London. Everyone liked Daphne for her kindness, or excuse me, everyone likes Daphne for her kindness and her wit, but no one truly desires her. She is simply too deuced honest for that too unwilling to play the romantic games that captivate gentlemen. Amiability is not a characteristic shared by Simon Bassett, Duke of Hastings. Recently returned to England from abroad, he intends to shun both marriage and society, just as his callous father shunned Simon throughout his painful childhood. Yet an encounter with his best friend's sister offers another option. If Daphne agrees to a fake courtship, Simon can deter the, mama, can deter the mamas who parade their daughters before him. Daphne, meanwhile, will see her prospects and her reputation soar. The plan works like a charm at first, but amid the glittering, gossipy, cutthroat world of London's elite, there is only one certainty. Love ignores, love ignores every rule. And it says, with tens of millions of copies of her books in print, number one New York Times bestselling author Julia Quinn has been called smart funny by Time magazine. Her novels have been translated into 33 languages and are beloved and our beloved the world over. A graduate of Harvard and Radcliffe Cl uh, Colleges, she lives with her family in the Pacific Northwest. So I, I'm loving this book so far. I don't really want to get into it because I'm doing a vlog for it. Um, but as you can see, it is a romance book. I'm definitely, if you haven't seen Bridget on Netflix, I definitely should, you should do so just to see what you think about the book or the, the TV series. Now, I will say there is some, like I said, there is some controversy things um, that I do want to bring up, but that'll be in my vlog once again. Um, but yeah, so this is a romance book. It's more like enemies to lovers sort of thing or or pretty much where he's pretty much somebody's courting um, somebody's sister, his best friend's sister in a way. So it's type, type of that type of uh, trope for this book. Um, but yeah, so I'll be reading this in January. Next book, this actually comes out this month. Um, I'm not sure what date, but I know people are already raving about it already. And that is Black Book, a novel by Mateo As uh, Um I got this, this is an ARC and I have received this and I wanted to wait until the month it came out. I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. But for the synopsis, it says, as an unambitious 22 year old Darren lives in a bedstow uh, brownstone with his with his mother who wants nothing more to see him alive or wants to see him live up to his potential as the valedictorian of Bronx science but Darren is content working at Starbucks in the lobby of a midtown office building hanging out with his girlfriend Soraya and eating his mother's home-cooked meals 
All that changes when a chance encounters with Rhett Daniels, the silver tongue CEO of Someone, Someone, NYC's hottest tech startup, results in an exclusive invitation for Darren to join an elite sales team on the 36th floor. After enduring a hell week of training, Darren, the only black person in the company, reimagines himself as Buck, a ruthless salesman unrecognizable to his friends and family. But when things turn tragic at home, at home and Buck feels he's hit rock bottom, he begins to hatch a plan to help young people of color infiltrate America's sales force, setting off a chain of events that forever changes the game. Black Buck is a hilarious, razor-sharp skewering of America's workforce. It is a propulsive, crackling debut that explores ambition and race and makes way for a necessary new vision of the American dream. So this sells something right up my alley. I also, I used to work at a, um, I guess it, it's a, I would say it's more of a dental insurance company, but they consider themselves a tech company as well. Um, and they were, there was only a trickle of, of people of color. So literally pretty much a handful of people of color at that, um, at that company, which you, you notice like, yeah, they really were very selective. Um, but of course the majority was white white people um so it was very different um this is a, a very different as far as um a working in a in a certain company in that in that perspective um but that was the first i ever did um work with a company that really wasn't really diverse it was mostly filled with white people so it was very it was very uncomfortable sometimes at times um when certain conversations was brought up but there was nothing I could do about it. Um, but anywho, so this is something that I definitely look forward to reading. This is something I haven't read before about pretty much a person of color working for a company, no diversity, which is very common in America today. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. So I'll be reading this in January as well. Next book that I'll be reading that also comes out in January, I believe uh, the 21st of January, and that is Happily Ever After is by Elise Bryant. Now this is like a rom-com type of romance, um, but let me go ahead and read the synopsis for you so you get a better understanding of what this is about. So on the back it says, Jane the Virgin meets to all the boys I've loved before in this charming romantic comedy filled with black girl magic. So it says 16 year old Tessa Johnson has never seen herself reflected in the pages of the romance novels she loves so much. The only place she feels like a leading lady is in her own writing. But after Tessa is accepted into the creative writing program of her prestigious art school, she is suddenly hit with a terrible case of writer's block. Fortunately, her best friend Caroline is ready with a list of romance novel inspired steps to refill Tessa's creative well. Nico, the brooding artist, is cast as the perfect Prince Charming. But as Tessa checks each item off Caroline's list, she gets further and further away from finding her words and herself again. She's well on her way to having her own real life love story, yet she can't help but wonder, is it the one she wants after all? So I'm this, it sounds so cute and I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. I also love the cover as well. It's be beautiful, it's gorgeous, it's blue. Um, and I wanting, I'm, I can't wait to know more about Tessa and Nico. So I'll be reading this in January as well. Now this next book, this uh, originally was supposed to come out in February, but they bu bumped it up to um, January the 26th. And uh, it's more, it's pretty much explained as Hunger Games type of vibes. So I'm looking forward for that. And that is Wings of Ebony by JL. So uh, this is definitely one of my anticipa anticipated reads anticipated reads of 2021 i have been looking forward to reading this uh like i said this is pretty much dealing with the hunger games the main character's name is rue so that's why people compare it to oh hunger games type of vibes um but let me read the synopsis for this book so it says rue's family is her whole life but but her world is upended when the unthinkable happens her mom is murdered and rue is snatched away by a father she never knew and forced to live at at his home in Gazan, a secret country of gods who wields a powerful magic. In Gazan, Rue's existence is a crime. There's never been a half god, half human there, where leaders protect their magical powers at all costs. Miserable and desperate to see her sister, Tasha, on the anniversary of their mother's death, Rue breaks Gazan's sacred do not leave law and returns to Houston, only to discover black kids are being forced into crime and violence and Tasha is in danger of falling sway to the very forces that claim their mother's life. Worse still, evidence mounts that the evil plaguing East Row is the same one that lurks in Gazan, an evil that will stop at nothing until it has stolen everything from her. Rue must embrace her true identity and wield the full magnitude of her ancestors power to save her hood before the gods burn it to the ground. 
but how can she pull it off when the enemy is everywhere? So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. This, like I said, it's one of my anticipated reads of this year. And I just love the cover overall. So I'm so excited to read this and I cannot wait to get into it this month. Last but not least, this is another book that I plan on reading. As you probably have seen in my uh, past videos that I had done uh, for Vlogmas, my one of my goals is to read uh, one nonfiction book each month. Um, so I wanted to read this one, but I'm thinking about also getting the audiobook as well, um, just so that it might help me to read along. Um, because I know people say this book is great, but I know that since with the small print, it might be more beneficial to me to uh, read along with it with the audiobook. But that is Becoming by Michelle Obama. Yes, I have not read this book, but I do plan on reading it this month. I've heard nothing but great things about this book and I just, I need to read it. Like it's a must. It is a must read for me. I have to read it. That way after I read this one, I can read Barack's book, which that's going to be volume one. I know there's a second book that's going to be coming out, which I'm thinking I might, I might read Barack's also through audiobook as well because I heard that is a monster and it can very and it's very intimidating when you look at it with all the pages with it. But I'm definitely looking forward to this book and for this one, the synopsis it says an intimate powerful and inspiring memoir of the former first lady of the United States. When she was a little girl Michelle Robinson's world was the south side of Chicago where she and her brother Craig shared a bedroom in their family's upstairs apartment and played catch in the park and where her parents Frazier and, Mar and Marion Robinson raised her to be outspoken and unafraid. But life soon took her much further afield from the halls of Princeton where she learned for the first time what it felt like to be the only black woman in a room to the glassy office tower where she worked as a high-powered corporate lawyer and where one summer morning a law student named Barack Obama appeared in her office and upended all her carefully made plans. Here for the first time Michelle Obama describes the early years of her marriage as she struggles to balance her work and family with her husband's fast-moving political career. She takes us inside their private debate over whether he should make a run for the presidency or her subsequent role as a popular but oft-criticized figure during his campaign. Narrating with grace, good humor, and uncommon candor, she provides a vivid behind-the-scenes account of her family's history making launch into the global limelight as well as their life inside the White House over eight momentous years as she comes to know her country and her country comes to know her. Becoming takes us through modest um, Iowa kitchens and ballrooms at Buckingham Palace through moments of heart-stopping grief and profound resilience bringing us bringing us deep into the soul of a singular groundbreaking figure in history as she strives to live authentically marshalling her personal strength and voice in service of a, of a set of higher ideals and telling her story with honesty and boldness she issues a challenge to the rest of us who are we and who do we want to become so I'm definitely looking forward to reading this. I like I already have a sense that it's going to be inspiring to me and makes me want to up my game as to becoming who I want to become and who I want to be in this world and what I want to contribute in this world while I'm here on, on this earth. Um, so yeah, so this is another book and the last book that I plan on uh, reading in January. But that is it, you guys. These are the books that I plan on reading in January. I might even add one more book to my TBR. To me, this is very ambitious. I usually can read maybe four books, but I'm trying to read five or more this month uh, just to, to make sure I have everything under control as far as all the new releases that I want to read and everything and what have you. So I'm trying to stay in a, a more planning type of way uh, to be more organized. Um, but yeah, so these are the books I'll be reading. Like I said, they're probably I'll add one more book to the pile, but I won't share that with you until my wrap up, maybe. Um, but anyways, that is it, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Also, hit that subscribe button and that bell to be notified when I upload more videos in the future. But thank you so much for watching, you guys, and please stay healthy and stay safe. See ya!